I chose UNE because UNE has amazing professors and resources. So I was, I was checking the, the website of UNE and the resources here, the library resources, and uh, the support, the professor's support is amazing. So, uh, and then during my application, the professors were just helping me a lot. Uh, during my scholarship application for my PhD. And once we got um, the scholarship accepted, when I uh, arrived here, my professor collected me from airport and took me to his home for a couple of weeks until the, I acclimated to the weather and culture. So this is not common in most parts of the world. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have friends in uh, different countries where, who are doing their PhD, and they found this really interesting story. And this is UNE. You know, professors are very friendly. The resources are uh, student-centered, and uh, everyone is welcoming. That's my testimony for the last three years. So the last three years, go to any uh, go to the school's offices or go to the research services or the international office. And all are very welcoming. And they all try to solve your issues if you have any issues. They are happy to solve it. So UNE and particularly for PhD student, the atmosphere, uh, how are the professors? Are they very conservative? Uh, how is the resource? Is there enough resource? Those are the major uh, things. And Armidal, interesting thing about Armidal is, Armidal is a small town where everything is accessible you know, within minutes. So even it's OK if you don't have a car, because most places are within walking distance. And yeah, that makes Armidal uh, a good learning environment. And yeah, I've been ex exciting experience I had all the past three years. My area of study was uh, malaria and dams. So I was enrolled in School of Environmental and Rural Science. And my research was looking at how dams impact malaria. So to put it this in uh, context, Africa is developing uh, dams now than ever. So there are over 200 large dams under construction. And everywhere uh, there is a rapid development of infrastructures. The reason is because Africa has uh, grows, has recorded uh, an amazing growth over the past 10 years. And that economic growth has translated into, you know, uh, large dam construction and irrigation scheme constructions. And the reason why this dam construction is important for Africa is it's a question of food security. So Africa wants to ensure food security and promote its uh, economic growth. And the World Bank, uh, the China government, and uh, the African Development Bank is supporting countries in the sub-Saharan Africa to develop uh, their water resources. Now, Africa is where 90% of the global malaria burden exists. Now, uh, recently, let me put it this way, recently malaria has been declining in Africa because as, as a result of this development and everything, they are uh, spending more money for interventions. However, construction of dams and the concern of people living around dams has made it impossible in some areas uh, for people to enjoy the outcome of the dam. For example, one example is in the northern part of Ethiopia. Uh, Twelve uh, small dams were constructed to help people uh, for their irrigation practices. And people left the area within one year because of the complaint of malaria.
And those 12 dams are empty. No one is using them. So imagine how, how much money has been pumped in to build and resources and uh, the expected objective and everything. All that is gone because, uh, because of the malaria issue. Now that prompted us to think, the first thing was how, the, how is malaria linked to dams? So the first is the how question, how? What are the components uh, during the malaria transmission life cycle? What are the components that are affected by the dam? The second question was, if we know how the dams affect malaria, is there any way to reduce the malaria transmission around dams? And the last objective was, can we produce can you develop a model that can help uh, dam developers, dam designers to incorporate into their uh, decision-making process of dam construction, which uh, covers the malaria control issue? So those were our main objectives. Now, I've, I've finished my PhD, and I'm now heading to uh, the University of California in US. The University of California offered me a postdoctoral research position uh, to build on what I did on this dam and malaria thing at the scale of sub-Saharan Africa. My contract will be for three years. So when you put these things together, uh, I came from Ethiopia all the way. And before I finish, I was offered uh, a postdoctoral position, and we have published papers from uh, our my research. And one of the papers was published last year, 2015, and it was number one in public view. And UNE has put together the resources and the peoples required for this work, and that shows uh, the level of the research, the quality of research we are doing at UNE. So doing UNE is, it brightens your future. UNE has impacted my life. My postdoc is uh, accepted because of the quality of the research UNE does, and they know about that. Choose UNE and you wouldn't regret. <laughs> UNE is the best place, one, because the resources, they are, they are resources a PhD student needs more than, more than what you need, they are resources. Two, you are independent. So in research, one of the hassles in research is your uh, communication with your supervisors is, uh, can be daunting sometimes. But here, what's at UNE, what's interesting is your supervisors give you the right to, to plan as you like. So as long as the objectives are met by the end of your study, they will give you uh, that independence, that freedom of doing things, reading it, and changing if you want to. So there, it is an open environment, and the supervisors are uh, like my, my previous university, which I did my bachelor degree, if you want to visit supervisors, you have to arrange time first. And here, one of the interesting time, uh, thing about the professors here is you can knock their door and jump in anytime, and they are happy to support you. So this is not, I hope most potential PhD students recognize this advantage because it's not a given advantage in every university in the world. And they are, your independence, uh, you are free to use your time. And the labs, if you want to use them during the weekend or overnight, or if you, if you decide to work starting from 1 a.m. in the morning, you have the right to do everything. So that flexibility for PhD students is, is very important. So a potential PhD student looks at, one, what the environment looks like, and the other, what are the resources? And the third one, uh, and the most important one is, how are the supervisors? 
And what's the structure of the communication? And, and I'll tell you this, the supervisors are happy to help you anytime, and your timeline, they always respect your timeline. And they always adjust their timeline based on your timeline. And they recognize that you are the most important component of the university. And that recognition is uh, it's very essential for a PhD student. If you don't have car, and if you want to work extended hours in your office, the university security will pick you any time in the evening and drop you at your place, any time. So this is not common, and we should appreciate uh, what the university is trying to do, trying to help students. Because in the evening, it's difficult to get public transport, and the university arranged, has arranged one. You just make a call, and they'll be there. They'll collect you and take you to anywhere. So the university has, um, the structure of the university has made it easy for PhD students uh, only to focus on their study while everything is taken care of by the schools. So that's my advice.